Hello everybody and welcome to my presentation on modeling realistic agents with social concepts. First, I'll talk a little bit about myself. I did a bachelor and master in artificial intelligence. I do a PhD at the moment with the title Realistic Agents with Social Practices, supervised by Virginia Dignan and Kathleen Juncker. And some research interests of mine are agent-based simulations, social psychology, and tragedy of the commons. Okay, let's start with an example. Do you remember when you were a kid and you had to share your dessert? How did you do it? Did you give everything away? Did you take everything yourself? Or did you share 50-50 or take a little bit more for yourself? Um, when humans are asked to do this in a similar psychological experiment, with them in money, they give away about 28% of the money to the other person. Now, classical economical agents do not share their desserts or money in this experiment and are therefore not realistic. They would keep everything themselves. So this raises, this raises the question, how to design realistic agents? So why is this relevant? Well, policies succeed because of realistic agents. Here we see a graph about organ donors. Um, on the y-axis you see the donor percentage, the percentage of the population that is a donor. And on the x-axis you see several countries. You see Denmark, Netherlands, pretty low donor percentage. And you see Austria, Belgium, Etc., having a very high donor percentage. Um, any idea why this is? Could it be religion, culture? The answer is simpler than that. In Denmark and the Netherlands and these countries, the policy is to opt in. That is, you are not an organ donor except if you actively opt in. For organ donation. And in Austria, Belgium, France there's an opt-out policy. So you're always an organ donor except if you choose actively not to be. The point here is that humans apparently usually go for the default option. If our goal is to have as many organ donors as possible, then it might be wise to know this because we can adapt our policy such that it accounts for this fact about human behavior. In summary, policy succeed because we have a realistic idea of humans, because we have realistic agents. Okay, so what did we do? Well, in last year, we showed that values and norms improve the realism of agents. We first tested uh, Leo. He was a bit of a gangster. He's a, a learning homo economicus agent. And with a homo economicus, I mean this classical economical agent that only cares about his own welfare. Leo is a bit more complex, it also tries to learn. But even Leo was outperformed by Vanessa, an agent who has values. And with values we mean things like fairness, or wealth, or privacy. Um, those things you find important in life. And he was also outperformed by Noel. And Noel is someone who follows others. He looks at the norm, the social norm. For example, uh, a norm right now is that uh, people listen to the presentation. And um, Noel always follows the norm. So he looks at what the norm is and then he does exactly what is expected. Then lastly, we simulated Fano. And Fano is a value norm agent. And Fano outperforms both Vanessa and Noel. So, Giving the agents both values and norms made the agent even more realistic than only giving it values or only giving it norms. So how did we do that? Well, we tested them in a specific scenario called the ultimatum game. The ultimatum game goes as follows. Uh, there's two players here, the two, two black figures, and uh, that, the left figure can divide 1,000 between himself and the other person. 
So you can choose to give $100 away, $1 away, $500 away, $3 away, whatever he wants. Um, but the other one can accept or reject. If the other one accepts, well, they both get a proposed split. Um, but if the other one rejects, they both don't get anything. Um, humans here, on average, give away about 40%. But what do the agents do? Well, we try to simulate them. We compare human behavior against the agent behavior. So you see a graph, you see the average demand, that's how many dollars people on average give away. Um, and on the x-axis you see the rounds. So we simulated multiple rounds and humans differ. In the first round they give a lower amount, they demand a lower amount than in the last round. In the last round they demand on average 580, on the first round they demand 506. Um, so the gray area here is what humans do, the 95% confidence interval of human play. And the black line is the simulated agent play. And the more they coincide, the more realistic the agent is. If you want to know more about this, you can, uh, can read about it in the paper we published. Um, but what are we going to do next? Well, we're going to improve the agent by endowing it with social practices. Social practices are a concept from sociology that describes our daily practices, like uh, discussing or commuting or eating, um, or browsing the internet. And it says that these practices consist out of three things, meaning, skills, and materials. So for example, browsing the internet, um, the materials of a browser, a computer are relevant. Um, the skills of computer knowledge is relevant. And um, it has a certain meaning. So it can be fun, maybe gaining knowledge, and maybe in the future, or maybe already for some preference, people, um, there's a meaning of privacy attached to it. Now, we believe that this social practice theory gives us a simple concept to easily define the social complexity that we want to model to make these agents more like humans, to make these agents realistic. But when we have tested and validated these agents, um, we can use them to explain social technical systems. For example, commuting, but also the adoption of technology, for example, the adoption of NervousNet, the project I'm part of, um, or maybe how people think about privacy and data sharing, the practice of data sharing, and the meaning of privacy attached to that. Um, as a last note, Notice that all these things are related to certain practices, the practice of commuting, the practice of adopting technology, the practice of data sharing. So we believe there's a lot of potential of using these social practice agents to explain the social technical systems.